Jesus heard and answered. 
when the stars are backward roll, and his home I shall behold. I will walk those streets of gold, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see each and everyone in the Lord's house tonight. Thank the Lord for another privilege to be back in his house. And uh, got much to be in prayer about tonight. Uh, many needs our prayers. Uh, let's get him remember Tom's family. His mother passed away there. And um, we'll be having her service tomorrow night at uh, Memorial uh, Funeral Home in uh, uh, Elizabethan. And uh, the uh, visitation uh, is from, uh, is it 6 to 7 or 5 to 7? What did I send out? 6 to 7. Six to seven. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's remember remember that. And the funeral's at 7 there at Memorial. And then be uh, taking her on up to Butler there at the home place uh, Friday. So uh, let's pray for keep his family in your prayers. And uh, I want to remember Miss uh, Robin Ramsey tonight. And in her prayers, and uh, she uh, she's been uh, uh, tested positive for COVID today, and uh, she needs our prayers. And uh, so they've admitted her uh, to keep a close watch on her. So uh, we know the Lord's been with her all this time, and He's not going to stop. And uh, let's just uh, pray the Lord just to uh, protect her and and uh, just keep her safe through all this. And and uh, his hand upon her, and uh, and so uh, pray for her and the family. Um, let's see here, Jackie Yarber. That's Elizabeth Yarber's husband. Uh, he started losing blood. Uh, he had actually had a blood test done, and <clears throat> and uh, the next morning they called him at 4:30 from the lab in Knoxville and told him to go to the emergency room. He was losing blood, and. So uh, they transferred him to uh, the uh, med center, and he's, uh, uh, he, he, they found the problem, had two ulcers, and they stopped the bleeding. So uh, uh, very thankful. Lord's uh, watched over him. Um, so just keep him in your prayers. And uh, also uh, my, my grandmother, uh, Marie Laws, she's had another stroke. Uh, they determined that uh, uh, today in uh Started seeing a different center and in, in the, called the hospice, and they come and uh, and confirm she has had another another stroke. So, like if you remember her in prayer, she also has a UTI. So uh, keep keep her in your prayers. Um, let's see here. Um, let's remember, continue to remember Linda Mock's daughter. Thank the Lord for watching over her, Miss Sarah. She. Uh, uh, she had allergic reaction to the contrast, uh, CT contrast, and uh, it could have been bad. It could have they 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 were close to intubating, but they didn't have to. It it, it closed her airway up. She uh, she almost stopped breathing, and uh, but uh, uh, she was at the right place, at the right time. I mean, the Lord allowed for her to to have it at the med center, and and uh, if she would have been elsewhere, they would have had to intubate. So uh, uh, that's. Uh, um, Melissa Edwards' uh, uh, niece as well. That's Sarah's little youngins uh, that uh, 
that she brings to church. So uh, uh, very thankful, very thankful, Lord, watching over Sarah. So she got to go home, and, and so she's doing fine. So thank the Lord for that. Um, um, got a friend, uh, Dwayne Casey. He, his wife has had a heart attack, and uh, they, uh, they, they got her to the hospital in time. Uh, but she has had a heart attack, but they've, uh, they've discovered she has like three major blockages, and they're going to have to do open heart surgery either tomorrow or Friday. So um, I told them we'd be praying for them, and uh, let's keep him in prayer. And uh, just uh, there's so many, many people that, uh, that needs our prayers. And uh, uh, I, I've come in contact with people every day, so praise your please pray for me. And Pray for this uh, person in my family, or pray for me. Um, so, uh, prayer, uh, prayer is coveted by everybody. I've never, I've, I don't believe, very few people I've ever asked uh, the, if I can pray for me has answered me, no, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, somewhere along life way, I believe they change their mind. Those that do reject it, and but uh, those that do refuse prayer, but. Uh, uh, but let's pray for one for another. Uh, we got several traveling, so let's remember, remember those that are traveling. And he have a spoken request. Remember, Michael, he just <clears throat> had already had one kid who lost one and now he's got a daughter. He's coming in Monday, I believe, and they're going to get the test done. And they're going to be in there. And also, my neighbor, his granddaddy, he's 30 months old. He's got. Remember that. I just remember uh, uh, Mason's mother, Valerie, she had a uh, surgery yesterday, in, uh, or uh, a couple of days ago, excuse me, uh, uh, and uh, repaired uh, uh, vertebrae in her neck, and they had to go through her, her throat, and uh, so she's, she's recovering from that. Everything went smoothly, but that's a very uh, uncomfortable surgery, so uh, I like to remember her in prayer, and thank the Lord for watching over her through that surgery. Anybody else? Yes, yes, let's remember that. All right, unspoken real quick. Yes, yes.
Yes. Remember that. Anybody else? All right. Unspoken request, live in the hand. That's all Ken will come around the altar tonight. Scott Metcalf, let's do prayer. Lord, we thank you. Anybody got a song word testimony on yours tonight? couple places we'll read um we'll read uh we'll we'll start in john chapter number 21 
John chapter 21 and verse number 15. And uh, we'll go from there. But uh, very familiar scripture what Jesus asked Peter concerning his love. And uh, if you stand with us, reading of God's word tonight, if you're able. So when they had done, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And thou, uh, he saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Thou lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, uh, thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto you, when, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt strip forth, stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Now, this spake he signified by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, uh, Follow me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word tonight. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you just uh, give us exactly what we stand in need of. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Some more scripture I want to read. Uh, in uh, Matthew chapter number 22, and uh, the Pharisees uh, and the Sadducees, they always tried to catch Jesus in his talk, and they tempted him in ways to try to, 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 uh, to find fault in him. They were trying to find fault in him long before Pilate's hall. They were trying to find fault in him long before uh, the week of the crucifixion. Uh, they, the Sadducees, the religious crowd, they, they was trying to uh, uh, pin him with the law. But what they didn't realize the whole time, he come to fulfill the law. They wasn't keeping it as much as they thought they were. But, uh, but Jesus was uh, coming to, to, uh, to fulfill the law that they could be righteous. And, and, uh, but this is what they said, tempting him. In verse number, uh, then one of them, verse 25, then one of them which was the lawyer asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What think ye of Christ? His son, whose son is he? They said, In the son of David. He said, How doeth David in the Spirit call him Lord? I say, And the Lord shall uh, said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to ask him a word, neither, now list this, neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. He put them in, his plate, in their place, didn't he? But now, uh, what I want to think about tonight is, is they, were, they were tempting him and, and trying, to, trying to see which, which, which was the greatest commandment in the law. Jesus as I said just a minute ago, we always had a way with words. And he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And he said, the, the first, This is the first and great commandment, and the second is likened to it, How thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
When you put your love in perspective where it needs to be, when you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, my friend, everything else will fall in place in your life. When you are committed to God and and to God's ways, uh, you'll do what's right, won't you? Amen? I believe that's why a lot of people's having a hard time living right, because their heart ain't in the right place. They honor Him with their lips, but their heart is far from Him. Who did He say that about? He said it about the religious crowd. This world's full of religious people that's honoring the Lord with their, with their lips, but their heart is far from Him. Uh, there's a lot of people that is claiming, well, I believe there's a God, or I believe there is a higher power, but you've got to identify that higher power. I've had to tell people that. People say, well, I believe in a higher power. I said, name that higher power. You've got to identify who He is. The Bible says there is no other power than that be of God. Amen? It is God Almighty. He's the Alpha. Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is God tonight. And when you you get committed, I I think about uh, religion. People say, I found religion. Uh, uh, Religion is is dedication. If you you look that up, it's dedication. You've got to have something before you can be dedicated to it. Amen. And there's a lot of people that has it up here, but they don't have it down here. Amen. How do we get saved from the heart? With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and mouth is made into uh, to, uh, uh, mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's it's from a heart. We love the Lord from our heart. When your heart is in something, you you're, you you'll give it all you got, won't you? What what did he say? Do all things uh, wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. And not unto men, not to be seen of men, but do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious crowd, they, they wanted to be heard for their much speaking. They wanted to be, uh, they wanted to be uh, 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 heard when they prayed, and they wanted to be seen when they tithed. They wanted even people uh, to notice them while they, when they were fasting. But Jesus told them, He said, when you fast, He said, don't do like the Pharisees and the religious crowds are doing. He said, do it in secret, and the Lord shall reward thee openly. And when you pray, don't stand in the synagogues like they're doing. And, and try. They, they love to be heard for their much speaking. He said, go into thy closet. And the Lord which seeth thee in secret shall reward thee openly. Jesus, He's not interested in how, how elaborate, uh, what kind of words we can put together. What He's interested in is what's coming from your heart. The Bible says the Pharisee prayed and bragged on himself. Lord, I think you ain't like this old publican over here, an extortioner and a thief, but uh, Lord, I, I fast twice a week and I tithe and I do this and I do that. And, uh, but the Lord, uh, the Bible says uh, uh, that that publican would even so much look up into heaven but smote his breast and said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. That man went down to his house justified just because he prayed from the heart. Amen. He rung the prayer bells of heaven and nothing's changed. We can still ring the prayer bells of heaven uh, when we pray from our heart. When you serve the Lord from your heart, uh, amen, it'll make a difference in your life. Amen. You know, we serve the Lord uh, the other days of the week when we're out out there. When we come into the house of God, we're worshiping, ain't we? Amen. Uh, but uh, when we come into the house of God and, and we, we worship Him wholeheartedly, amen, I believe the Lord smells a sweet savor when we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Don't you? I was thinking about love. We, we don't know how to love. Our love within ourselves is as, uh, 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 it's a selfish love. Our love is, a, is, a, is of this old flesh. We only love them that loves us. But what happened when we got saved? Uh, we had a heart transplant. The Lord did some heart surgery on us. And uh, He changed your ways from your heart. 
He knew that you couldn't live right, and he knew that uh, you wouldn't desire him, but he knew uh, that if he changed your heart, that you'd love him. Amen? Because when we were born into sin, this so it's so hard here. It, it's a, uh, it's full of, uh, it's full of sin. It's full of envy, and it's full of lust. It's full of iniquity, ain't it? Uh, but when he saved us, the Bible says that he he washed us white as snow, amen. And he changed us. He changed our nature when he changed your heart. Is that making sense? He changed your nature. You're not the same anymore because He changed your heart. He changed your nature. You've heard me mention the uh, the illustration of the hog and the and, and, and the dog. Uh, the dog. The Bible says the dog goes back to its, the, its vomit and the and the swine goes back to the mire. The reason why it does that is because that's their nature. But God changed our nature and we're not going back to the vomit and we're not going back to the mire of the world, the mire of sin. That's what He saved us from. And He changed us. And He said there in John 14, He said in verse number 14, if you, or uh, 15, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, Keep my commandments. Now I'm getting, I'm getting where I started from. Just bear with me. Now I'll go on down to verse 23, John 14. Jesus answered, said unto him, he was talking about to, uh, the Judas, not Iscariot. He said, How is it that thou would uh, manifest thyself and do us and not into the world? And Jesus said, answered and said unto him, if, any, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Listen to that. And my Father will love him, and we will come uh, unto him. We. Who's we? The Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Amen. We believe in that, don't we? Amen. I'm just making sure it got a little quiet. All right. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. That's good. I'm going to read it again. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. See, you can't deny what you're doing, right? Amen. If you love the Lord, you're going to follow him. If you love the Lord, uh, friend, you're going you're gonna to be where God's at. You're going to dwell in the house of God. And you're going to be faithful to the house of God. But not only to the house of God, but you're going to be faithful when you're not in God's house. Amen? When nobody's looking, you're going to be faithful if you love God. Your true character is who you are when nobody's watching. That's who you really are. Amen? You're not putting on a front to nobody. I mean, you might be to, to people, but not to God. God knows their heart. God even knows the intentions of her heart. I mean, that's pretty deep, ain't it? That's as deep as it gets. But, but the thing of it is, the Lord said, If you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. And he that loveth me not keepeth not my commandments. And the, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's uh, which, which, uh, uh, which sent me. And so... Uh, uh, we we think about to, uh, you know what what he told uh, uh, what he told there. Uh, he said, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me more more than these? And he said, Yea, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, Feed my lambs. He said again, Peter, do you love me? Lovest thou me? And he said, or Simon, lovest thou me? And he said, Lord, you know I love you. And then the third time, Peter kind of got a little frustrated, I guess. And he said, Lord, you know us all things. You know I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. Peter, if you love me, do what I've asked you to do. Do what I've told you to do. And you remember when they, when they saw after Jesus had been crucified and, and Buried, and Peter said, I go a-fishing. And they, they went out, and they were out there, and they, they seen somebody on the shore. 
And they said, why, it's the Lord. And Peter, P- Peter was naked, and he got his fisherman's coat and, and, uh, and, and girded himself. And, and, uh, and uh, Jesus said, have you any meat? And, uh, and you know, uh, uh, you think about uh, how that uh, they, Peter, I guess he went back to plan B. That's what he was doing, fishing, uh, commercial fishing, when the Lord had, uh, had uh, called him. And he had a calling on his life, and he knew what God wanted him to do, but he wasn't doing it. He went back to plan B. And so he remembered the words of the Lord, and he repented of what he was doing, right? And, and so... I believe sometimes we, we've got in our mind plan B, but we need to get rid of the boat. We need, to get rid of the, we need to get rid of plan B, but we need to follow God wholly. And that's exactly what Peter did. I mean, the Lord had some discussions with Peter, and he said uh, about his commitment. And I, myself, and I hope we all can relate with Peter sometimes of not... I've not been committed like we are. We got other things going on. We've we've got other things that we've we've got our little ideas and opinions. But 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 the Lord had a conversation with Peter. He said, "Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat." But I have prayed for thee, Simon, that thy faith fail not. That when thou art converted, you'll strengthen the brethren. The Lord knew that He would deny him three times. So I told him that. And I believe the Lord knew that Peter would go back to the boat. Peter had to be reminded, didn't he? And we all have to be reminded sometimes when we get things out of perspective and our commitment to God ain't like it should be. Maybe we're not as, I guess you'd say is spiritual around some crowds than we are others. It's easy to be a Christian in church. It's easy to be spiritual at church. But what about when you are the minority? Are you still following the Lord? Are you still loving Him like you did when, when you was in church? I believe God wants us to be not ashamed of Him. He said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, Peter, feed my lambs. If you love me, Peter, feed my sheep. Do what I've told you to do. And I know not all love as you say, well, that's just a, that's a, that's an exhortation to a, to a, a man of God that's preaching. That's to whosoever. I believe that's, uh, uh, we as God's people, we need to be a, a feeding people. Amen. Well, we, we've got some substance about us. We're saved by the grace of God. We've, we, we've got a testimony to tell. People need what you've got and you need to tell it. Amen. You need to feed the sheep tonight. Amen. And I believe that uh, when we consider the love and the faithfulness of God, God's faithful, ain't He? We need to be as faithful to Him as He's faithful to us. You say, well, preacher, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big expectation. That's a, that's a big task. We need to strive. I know we ain't perfect. We won't be until we get that glorified body. But He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen? We need to strive, don't we? When you fail, what what James say? If you sin, or a little John, I mean... Hey, hey, if you do sin, have an advocate with the Father. Amen? And, and, and so uh, we need to admit our wrongs, don't we? We need to, need to admit when we do wrong. It says, uh, and I like this part too about fellowship. Um, it says, That which we have seen and heard and declared we unto you, that ye may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. You say, well, preacher, it seems like my joy ain't as full as it used to be. Well, I'd check up on, on your love. Amen. Church of Ephesus, they left, lost their first love. Amen. They left, left their first love. And <coughs> I believe sometimes that we, we might be uh, 
because of lifestyles and because of, of, of things that we're doing. And not necessarily uh, it's uh, what's hurting our relationship with God and our fellowship with God is what we're doing. It might be just what we ain't doing. Amen? We said, well, I don't drink and I don't do this. I don't do these bad things. Well, it might be things we ain't doing. Are we praying like we ought to be? Are we, are, are we reading God's Word? Are we spending time with God? Or allowing God to, to, to feed us and to give us that manna from heaven every day? Uh, are, are, we, are we neglecting things in our life? Are we neglecting to have, have that uh, long time with God and that fellowship with God? And uh, that will have a big, big uh, damper uh, on your Christian life. It will. Amen? When you're uh, walking uh, far off from God. Uh, but God, uh, he said, and I thought about this, you know, you said, well, preacher, what about them people that, that, um, that uh, they, uh, they say they're Christians and, and, and they just live any way they want to and uh, you'll see them in church then you just won't, you, 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 they, they just uh, don't come back and they just live any way they want to. I think about this, 1 John chapter number 2 and verse number 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt continue with us. Amen? I mean, you, hey, it, the actions, it, it, it speaks for itself. So talk is cheap. You can say, I love the Lord, but you're going to prove it in the way you live. Man, you can say you're a Christian all you want to. But friend... I, I, your actions is proven if you're a Christian or not. Amen. You'll know a tree, the Bible says. That verse is a lot, a lot of times it is, it is uh, taken out of context. People say you'll judge a tree. None of us is no judge, amen. There's only one judge and one righteous judge, and that's God. And we, we sure ain't him, amen. But, but you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. I can tell a golden delicious from a stamen and a red delicious, right? I can tell, I can, I can tell a wolf river uh, from a bellflower. I, I, there, there's, there's apple trees that I know, right, because of the fruit. Well, here's the thing. People that ain't even saved, they'll know if you're a Christian or not by the way you live. They'll watch your life. They, they, you don't never know who's watching, no, do you? They'll watch you, and especially if something goes wrong in a very tense situation, they'll watch you. They'll watch you. And I wonder if how many people has lost confidence in a lot of lost people because of their attitudes and because of the way they've acted, because of the way they've... They've, they've handled themselves. And, and, and let's just let's face it, maybe at work or maybe at a ball game. Right? You see people just get blistered, don't you? How sad it is people lose their witness and their, their people's, people's confidence. And lost people's watching, ain't they? They really are. And we need to be careful of what, of what we're, the life that we're living. And, and as the as the Lord asked Peter, I want I just I pray that we'll all read that as, as the Lord is asking us. You put your name where Simon's was. Do you love me? Do you love me? Yea, Lord. I, I believe everybody in here and everybody that's listening on live stream would say, Well, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Keep my commandments. Man. Where your heart is, where your treasure is, where your treasure is, there your heart be also. If your treasure is Jesus, your heart will be in it then. And whatever you do for the Lord, give it all your heart. Which is the greatest commandment? I'm coming to the close, but I want to I read it again. Which is the greatest? He said, love the Lord God with all thy heart. With all thy soul and with all thy mind. Amen. And love 
thy neighbor as thyself. Now, when you love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, it's easy to love one another then, ain't it? That just goes together. And you know what? Your neighbor is also maybe them. You say, neighbor, that's the person that lives beside of him. Well, spiritually speaking, that's whoever's around you. That's even those that despitefully use you. That's those that you don't necessarily care much for. But the Bible tells, them, tells you to love them. Love them as you love yourself. Now, we, we like old number one pretty good, don't we? We take care of old number one. Number one gets sick. Number one goes to the doctor pretty quickly. Love your neighbor just like you love yourself. Amen. And, and when, we, when we do that, well, the Bible even tells us as spouses, you know, love your spouse, love, love your wife as you love yourself, you know. And we need to love one another with God's love. Man, a church, a church that, that, that thrives is loving on one another. Man, not divided. A house divided against itself cannot stand. We love one another. What goes along with love? Forgiveness. Man, forgiveness. Temperance. Long-suffering. Long-suffering. You say, I ain't much, ain't much more I can take. We think about how long-suffering God is. How long-suffering He's been to me and you. And how forgiving He's been to me and you. That's how we need to be to one another. Not only do we need, but that's a commandment. To love one another as Christ has loved us. To forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. I've heard, I, 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 I've said this before. There's a lot of people say, well, I can't forgive that person. I just can't do it. I can't find it within myself to forgive that person the way they done me. Well, I want you to think about this. Think how many times you failed God since you've been saved. You've lied to Him. You've made promises that you didn't keep. I mean, let's just call it like it is. If you didn't keep your word, you lied. But He still loved you. He didn't condone the sin by all means, but He sure did forgive you though, didn't He? Man, did we deserve His forgiveness? No. Did we for deserve His forgiveness when he, when he saved us that day that we got saved? Did we deserve it? No. But He loved us anyway. And a person, maybe you're heard at, you think, well, I, there's no way I can forgive him. Listen, there's no way that you can live a fruitful life for Jesus Christ and your, and your uh, 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 Christian life be truly wholeheartedly and loving Him with all your heart. You can't love Him with all your heart if you're hating your enemy. Amen? What does the Bible say this? I thought I was done preaching, but hey. If we say that we have fellowship with Him, I'm in 1 John 1, 6. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. Uh, let me say this about love and loving one another. Uh, the whole book of First John is is geared toward love, and and uh, and and you you think uh, uh, it, it even says in verse fourteen, chapter three, we we know that we have passed from death and life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brethren uh, abideth in death. Man, how can we say we're a Christian when we're not loving our brother? 
we're not forgiving one another. Uh, but we need to we need to be loving one another and forgiving. Swallow your pride. It, it may feel like it'll choke you, but I guarantee you it'll set you free and, and you'll be at liberty and, and you, you'll be able to grow then as a Christian. You can't grow when, when you're harboring things up. I mean, it's time of year you, you trim fruit trees and uh, trim trees and uh, while the sap's down and, 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 and you, uh, you, you get rid of things that's hurting uh, the tree, that's taking the fruit. Water sprouts take fruit. It'll make the fruit small. But you cut them water sprouts out, and you, you cut that tree. And uh, I was, I was uh, trim, trimming the apple tree just the other day and had an had a, uh, apple uh, farmer uh, help me, and I, I wanted to learn. And uh, he said, you know, he said, uh, there's, uh, you, can, you, can trim, you can trim too little, but you can trim too much. And I was thinking of this, the Lord knows how much we can handle. He does. And He knows just the very uh, trimming that we need to make us fruitful. And, and, and you know, when, when you trim, and you trim a, tr a tree right, you trim limbs that's going straight up, and you trim tr uh, limbs that's in the middle that, that's, that's uh, uh, taking the, um, the, the growth and the water sprouts, and, and, and basically you open it up to where it'll get sunlight. We need the light of Jesus Christ in our life, don't we? Amen. And, and when, a, when a tree is not pruned every year, when a tree is not fertilized and, and, and sprayed every year, the fruit is not to its potential. And I believe as God's people, we have to be wrong. We have to, we, 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 we got to admit a wrong, what, basically what I'm saying. Well, as long as we're not admitting a wrong and, and, and as long as we're justifying our ways and God's not pleased with it, you're not going to be fruitful. But love Him. Love Him like He wants you to love Him. Love Him with your heart. Don't love Him with your lips. There's a lot of people doing that. He's tired of lip service. But he wants us to love him from our heart. Man, because if you love him from my heart, I can say to my wife, I love you. But if I don't prove it, if I don't, if I don't show it in my actions, my words are just, it's just, it's just a bunch of words, ain't it? But how much do we do God that way? Lord, I love you, but we ain't read his word all week. We ain't talked to him all week. We've not communed with him. We've not studied and prayed not had fellowship with him, but we, we sure ain't proving it, maybe in our way sometimes, but, but if we'll get that in perspective, and I believe church will mean more to us, the Bible will mean a whole lot more to us, and even singing the songs that we've sung all these years will have a, a greater meaning if we'll love him from our heart. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, God, for your word, and help us tonight, I pray, to to love you, Lord, with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. And Lord, help us to feed your lambs and feed your sheep. Love our neighbor as we love ourselves. God, just speak to our hearts tonight and help us to apply your word to our heart. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.